are year three, we're going to do some reading today. So last week you read, so Mrs Hawkins read to you part of Farjat Poor and she read chapter three with you and she left you with a couple of questions. So one of the question was, why wasn't the, why doesn't the mum, the dad and Aunt Julie want to believe? So hopefully you worked that out at home and the answer was they thought that nothing bad could happen to them, that they were almost special or untouchable. And the other question was, was why did um, they square up to Elder Poor? Because he suggested to them that they have to go outside and Father Poor just didn't agree. He thought that was a really dangerous decision. So I hope you had a good try at doing some research on the cats last week as well. And I'm going to set you a little challenge at the end of this reading as well. So there's going to be some words that are going to come up in the text today. I'm going to read two, two chapters to you, chapter four and chapter five. So one of the words is sloped. One is concealed, one is gnarled, and one is padded. So you might want to pause here and have a little guess at what you think those words might be. If you're not sure, you could actually look in the dictionary or go online. So pause now to have a little think. Okay, so hopefully you've had a think at home. So the first word, sloped. Now sometimes this means like an angle, like sloped like that. But sometimes someone or something, like a cat, might slope off. So it means they're going off, sort of down at an angle. Okay, the word concealed, that's where something's hidden, concealed. Niled, now this is a funny word, I had to Google this one as well. So sometimes they use Nile to describe like old people's fingers. Sometimes trees become Niled when they're all entwined and wrinkly together. And the last word is the verb padded, that's how someone or something might walk. Think about a lion going through, creeping up on its prey, it will pad along with the pads of its feet. Okay, so today, these are the questions I would like you to think about. So you might want to pause your screen here so you can see these questions. So one question says, what are the monsters and why do they need one? Another question, what are the three skills Elder Paul shares with Farjak? What do you think these are? And finally, what did Elder Paul mean by saying, this is the only way? Okay, so I'm going to read chapter four and chapter five to you, thinking about those questions as I read. Chapter four. The moment the grown-ups had left the room, Julius turned to Varjak. I know why the Contessa's not here, he said, digging a claw into the toy mouse. It's because she can't stand to look at Varjak's eyes. Jasmine, Jay, Jethro and Jerome all stood by Julius's side. No one stood by Varjak's side. He was alone and boxed in by the Contessa's empty armchair. Poor Varjak, said Cousin Jasmine, but she was smiling as if it was some kind of joke. Why do you always pick on him? I'm sure he'd rather have green eyes like everyone else. Because they're different, said Jay. The colour of danger, added Jethro. He's not one of us, con concluded Jerome. Varjak ignored them. He didn't even look at them, staring instead into the fire. The Contessa's not here because he's, she's probably dead. Didn't you hear the elder poor? That's enough, insect, snapped Julius. No one asks you. How dare you speak in family council? You're a disgrace to the name of Jalal. Julius's tail thudded menacingly on the rug. Very slowly, Varjak looked up and met his big brother's eyes. His own tail started to thud. Is that supposed to scare me, sneered Julius. He towered over Varjak. His claws came out, and so did Varjak's. Fight! 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 Jay, Jethro and Jerome crowded around the two of them. Jasmine watched, grooming her fine silver-blue fur. Varjak stood, shook inside, but he didn't show it, didn't back off. He'd never had a real fight, and he knew he didn't stand a chance against Julius. But it was as something inside him was rising up, something old and strong and very deep. Who did Julius think he was? Julius, darling, he's only a little kitten, cooed Jasmine in a milk-in-the-morning voice. He's not even a proper Mesopotamian blue, asked Julius. He stared at Varjak with devastating green eyes. His pupils were thin slips of scorn, mocking, challenging, daring Varjak to move first. Varjak couldn't. He couldn't even hold the gaze. It was too strong, too sure of itself. Whoever it was that, that had risen up within him had gone. He turned away and backed down. It was over. Julius had beaten him with one, just one look, as father had beaten the elder poor. In the fireplace, the flame spluttered and then died. 
You're the cause of all this trouble, said Julius. Apologise for what you've done. I'm sorry, croaked Varjak. The words were like hot coals in his mouth. And don't ever do it again, or I'll break every bone in your body. Varjak sloped away from the front room, humiliation scorching his cheeks. A disgrace in the name of Jalal, that hurt the most. He didn't care what Julius thought, but Varjak had always felt close to his ancestor. Always loved the tales. He couldn't bear the thought of being a disgrace to him. You wait, he said to an imaginary Julius in his head. You just wait. One day I'll show you. There was no one in the hallway. It didn't matter if he was caught going out into the garden now. Things could hardly get any worse. Varjak went up to the back door, nudged the cat flap open and slid silently out. The garden was a dark and gloomy place, full of gnarled old trees. They bent back on themselves, grown inwards and locked together, making a tangled net of knotted wood. It was hard to see the sky through them. Beyond the trees lay the stone wall that enclosed the Contessa's house and garden. It was so high that no one in the family could imagine climbing it, even Varjak, who could sometimes make it halfway up a curtain before mother or father shouted him down. He drank in the cold night air, peered at the massive wall, the tangled branches, and thought he could see a thin white whisper of moon up there, far, far above. Varjak, it was Elder Paul, he was on his own at the bottom of the garden by the crumbling roots of a dying tree. Varjak padded over to join him. I'm sorry, Elder Paul, he said. It's my fault, everything that happened. But it's true about the black cats. I swear in the name of Jalal, it's true. His father smiled sadly. I know that, he replied. And it's not your fault, not a bit of it. It's them. They don't even want to think any more. They sat in silence together, in the shadow of the wall. Are you still going to tell me the tale of Jalal's greatest battle, said Varjak after a while. Against Salia of the North? Not tonight, said Father Paul. I'm afraid there are much more important things to tell you. You're still wrong, still young, but I don't think we have much time, and you're the only one who will understand. Varjak's skin tingled beneath his fur. Even after what had happened in the council, he was thrilled by his grandfather's words. I'm ready, Elder Paul, he said. Then listen carefully, Jalal. Jalal only knows what this gentleman's up to, and with the Contessa gone, it's more than we can manage. We have to get help from the outside. Isn't the world outside full of monsters, said Varjak. A monster is exactly what we need. A monster called a dog. The tales say they are huge and strong enough to kill a man. Dogs fill the heart with fear with their foul breath and def deafening sound. But the tales also say that Jalal could talk to them, so there must be a way to get their help to scare the man away. Mother and father says these tales aren't true. They said they're only stories. Only stories? The elder Paul looked at him. And you believe that? Varjak shook his head. No. Good, because I'm going to tell you a family secret now. An old one. It goes right back to the beginning. Varjak's mind raced. This is the first he'd heard of any secret. Is it about Jalal? He guessed. The elder Paul smel smiled in the dark. He is indeed. Everyone knows the tales of Jalal, but this, his way is a mystery, known only to a few. The way of Jalal, this was something Julius and the others knew nothing about, and the Elder Paul was telling him, and him and no one else. The way, said Elder Paul, has been passed down through the ages from Paul to Paul. Much of it has been forgotten over the years, lost and corrupted through time. Now only fragments remain. Perhaps the way will help us talk to dogs, but perhaps not. I do not know it all, and I fear I won't have long enough to teach you all the parts I know, but it's all we have left. Varjak felt strangely disappointed. Now he knew there was a family secret. He wanted to know it all. What was the point of a secret which was lost? Still, something was better than nothing. Tell me more, Elder Paul. Come closer, Varjak bent towards him. Closer. He leant right over, so his ear was by Elder Paul's mouth. There are seven skills in the way of Jalal, whispered the Elder Paul. His breath was warm in the night cold air, but we only know three of them. Their names are these, slow time, moving circles, shadow walking. He recited the skills slowly in rhythm like poetry. Learn these words and pass them on in time. Slow time, said Varjak, moving circles, shadow walking. He rolled the words over his tongue like a new taste. Again, slow time moving circles, shadow walking. His fur prickled at the strange sounds. Never forget this. Keep the way alive, Varjak Paul. 
Badger nodded. The words, Shalau's words, were safe in his head. He'd always remember them. Click. The back door swung open. Farjack and the Elder Paul looked around. The gentleman was standing there, and by his shiny black shoes, there were two sleek black cats. Okay, chapter five. The temperature seemed to drop. Farjack shivered. I don't like this, whispered Elder Paul. I don't like this one bit. The gentleman pointed at them across the garden. He crouched down to touch the collars on the black cat's necks and whispered something into their ears. Then he turned and went back inside, leaving Farjack and Elderport alone with the cats. Farjack's fur bushed out with fear as the cats came slowly and deliberately across the grass towards them. There was something so strange, so menacing about the way they moved. Who are you? called the Elderport. They didn't answer. They just kept coming. Farjack and his grandfather backed away, but there wasn't far to go. In a few steps, they were up against the wall, as far from the house as they could get. Farjack's pulse was racing. He remembered how the gentleman's cats had pushed him aside so easily. It looked like nothing in the world could stop them now. He scratched at his collar. It felt tight around his neck. Farjack, said Elder Paul urgently, but without a hint of worry in his voice, I think someone as brave as you should climb this wall and go outside, don't you? Farjack glanced up. The stone was concealed by moss, but there was no hiding the wall's height. It was massive. Don't worry, said the elder poor. You'll be you'll have time. I'll see to that. I'll have time, Farjack's head swam. What was Elder Paul saying? That he should go outside on his own? But can't we both? No, we can't. Only one of us must can get out. I'll keep them busy. You must go outside and find a dog. You're not going to fight them, are you? They'll they'll the elder poor took a pace towards the black cats. In his eyes was a fire that Farjack had never seen. Go, bring back this thing that even men are scared of, and keep the way alive, Farjack Paul. The cats had stopped. They were looking at the elder poor as if they were waiting for him. The elder poor growled at them. Farjack's head hurt. He was being torn apart by a thousand different feelings. The elder poor strode forward to meet the gentleman's cats. Tail held high, green eyes blazing. Go, Farjack, before it's too late. Don't look back. This is the only way. He looked fierce and magnificent. The tired old cat of the council was gone. It now he has, was a son of Jalau, facing the enemy, proud and powerful. Go, he yelled, and hurled himself at the black cats. They nodded as he came, as if it was too easy. The elder poor ran straight at them, but then he seemed to shimmer for a moment and went through the gap between them and came out the other side. The two cats spun around. The elder poor was just out of reach. They glanced at each other and went after him. Farjack's throat, heart thumped in his throat. His grandfather was leading them away through the trees back towards the house. He was taking them further and further from Farjack with quick wits and cunning and a flash of silver blue. The black cats were faster. They moved together perfectly. Each one looked sleek and lethal. How could the elder poor fight two together? Already he was slowing down, still proud, but old and short of breath. And the black cats were closing in, one on each side. They'd catch him soon. Even if they didn't, what would he do against a gentleman ten times his size? What could any cat do, or even a whole family? The elder Paul was right. The only chance was to find a dog. His grandfather was doing what he had to do, and now it was all up to Varjak. His mind was on fire. Varjak tore his eyes from the garden and turned to the wall. He separated the world he knew from the, the world outside. No poor had been over that wall since Shalau himself, and, but it was the only way out. He took a deep breath, coiled his body tight. One last glance, over his shoulder. No! The black cats had caught the elder poor. They had him backed up against the house. They came at him from both sides. He slashed out, but together they swarmed on top of him and forced him down to the ground. There was a terrible howl. The black cats came away, shaking their heads, and the elder poor... The elder Paul looked limp, like a broken toy. There was a roaring in Farjack's ears. His stomach churned. Everything inside him screamed at him to stay, to fight, to help the only cat who had ever understood him. But the elder Paul words echoed in his mind. Go, before it's too late. He turned to the wall. Three, two, one. Farjack exploded into motion. Back legs uncoiled. Front paws reached out for a grip. Found it. Back legs pushed. Pumps powered up and up like the wind. Farjack Paul flew up the face of the wall, up through the trees, higher than the curtains, higher than the house, up, beginning to tire, muscles aching, vision blurring. How much further? 
up, grip after grip, paw over paw, slipping, latched onto a ledge, heaved and made it to the top of the wall. Outside, for the first time since Jalau, a paw stood on the edge of the world. And it finishes on that double page there with those pictures. So, hopefully you had a go at answering those questions and we'll look at those next time. My little challenge for you is I photocopy some pictures from the story and I'd like you to be a little bit creative and have a go at creating some of your own artwork based on the illustrations of Vajat Paul. Okay, so that's the front cover there. Okay, look after yourself, Year 3, and I hope to see you soon.